Sultan Khan is perhaps the most naturally talented chess player to ever live. He came from Pakistan as a servant to uh, Great Britain in 1929 and took the chess world by storm. He played some of the very best players of the era, including uh, Capablanca, Alakin, and so forth. And in a four-year span of time, 1929 to 1933, he won the British Championship. Uh, he, he was just an, an extraordinary player. He beat Capablanca. Uh, and people today, some, some think he, should, think he should be posthumously awarded the Grand Master title. Tell me in the comments section if you think uh, he should receive that GM title now uh, as a show of respect for his accomplishments. And in 1933, he left. And uh, in terms of his chess career, uh, that was it. Just the sort of the, the light that burns twice as brightly but half as long. And he came in, he, he didn't know how to, to read, he didn't know how to study chess. I mean, forget access to computers that we have today. Uh, he came in really, it was a completely intuitive, sort of a natural player. And his play was beautiful, as we're going to see in this game. His opponent is a Viktor Ivanovich Sultan Beef. I don't know if you pronounce it Sultan Beef. I hope you do, because I love that name. Uh, who was a very strong chess player of, of the era. And he had white Sultan Khan had black. Let us jump right in. D4 is played. Knight to F6 from Sultan Khan. Knight to F3 and B6. I guess it's no real surprise that uh, Sultan Khan plays an Indian opening, in this case the Queen's Indian, because in Indian chess at that time, you could not move the pawns forward two moves on the uh, two squares on the first move. That's why today Indian openings, the King's Indian, uh, the Queen's Indian, and so forth, a black does not move the pawns two squares on the first move, and here we see a b7, b6, so that one move. Playing to control the e4 square, c4 gaining space, e6, and again, this bishop can pin on b4 if white uh, plays knight to c3. g3 is played by Sultan B. If he wants to contest this long diagonal, bishop b7, bishop g2, and now bishop to b4 check. Uh, white can block it with the knight if he wants, but Sultan B plays bishop to d2. And uh, Sultan Khan takes on d2 with check. This is a very common line. Even today, top GMs play this opening, even though this was played in the 1930. Knight b to d2, castles. And here, the best scoring move for white is actually queen to c2, with the idea, again, of further controlling the e4 square and advancing e2, e4. Uh, but Sultan B goes ahead and castles short. And here, Sultan Khan shows his deep positional understanding. He plays the move c5. It, it, with these Indian openings, eventually you do have to attack the center by moving a, a pawn up two squares. And here what he's doing, he's attacking the dark squares, particularly this d4 square, and he would like to trade off his c pawn for the d pawn, and that way he would be left with a two versus one majority in the center, an extra central pawn uh, to control the center with. Queen to c2 was played by Sultan Beef. Uh, taking on d4 is fine here. But uh, Sultan Khan decides to build the pressure a little bit. So he plays knight to c6. Now the pawn and the knight are hitting that d4 square. And white goes ahead and takes on c5. Black recaptures. And we can see uh, Sultan Khan has achieved his first strategic aim. He has two central pawns versus one, which will make it easier for him to control the central squares. Uh, a good move for white here is rook f to d1, delaying the development of uh, the e pawn. Maybe it could play to e3. But instead, he plays it to e4, a very aggressive move. What white wants to do is play that pawn to e5, gain space, take advantage of these dark squared weaknesses, uses the e4 square as a pivot point for his pieces, and uh, black cannot allow this. And basically, the battle rev revolves around this pawn push. If black can stop it, he's in good shape. If white can play it, white's going to be in good shape. So the first thing Sultan Khan does is play queen to c7, the queen and the knight help prevent the advance of the pawn. Rook f to e1, supporting the advance of the pawn. And the most direct way to stop the, the advance here would be e5, uh, which, which is not bad. He has a target on e4. It blocks the mobility of white's light-squared bishop, and he, he has a square on d4. But it also creates a backwards pawn on the d file and his own weak square at d5. So instead, Sultan Khan plays d6 to keep that square under control. Um, White could have played e5 here, and that might even have been the best option, although black is still a bit better after pawn takes, knight takes e5, then knight to d4, hits the queen, the queen moves, 
light squared bishops are exchanged, queen to b7 check, and we can see black has a slight pull with some pressure on the king and these light squares. Uh, but instead, Sol uh, Sultan B plays rook A to C1, and now H6 from Sultan Khan. Of course, that gives his king a little luff later, uh, keeps pieces out of the G5 square, but it also uh, prepares the move G5, G4 for black to displace this knight on F3, which currently guards the D4 square. Uh, so that's one of the ideas behind uh, H6. White plays A3 to keep this knight out of B4 and per perhaps play B2, B4 himself to break on the queen side. Sultan Khan plays knight to D7. Now, this is a multi-purpose move. It could go to B6 to put pressure on C4. It could also go to uh, E5 to take advantage of these dark squares, maybe trade off the knight at F3. But very importantly, it prepares the move F7, F5, not only to open up the diagonal for the light squared bishop, but to play his rooks to the f-file. So a multi-purpose move, a very advanced and sophisticated move from Sultan Khan. Queen to c3 is played by Sultan b, uh, preparing to play b2, b4, and gain space on the queen side. So black plays a5 to help clamp down on the b4 square. And here, uh, Sultan b plays the move knight to h4, probably a move like b3, stopping uh, a5, a4 was best. Uh, but he's aggressive. He plays knight to h4. He wants to attack. He's ready to play his f-pawn to, uh, to f4. Um, the problem is Sultan Khan has such control over these central squares that it's going to be very hard for white to attack on, on the king's side. And here, uh, a4 was good, clamping down on b3, but g5 was played by Sultan Khan, immediately going after this knight on the h4 square. And here, uh, after knight h to f3, a4, and white is not doing well at all here. He's having going to have a hard time finding play anywhere on the board, and uh, black's play on these central dark squares is fairly easy. But Sultan Beef was no slouch, and he played a very strong reply to this move. Queen to e3, preparing to sacrifice his knight. And if black uh, takes the knight, then after queen takes h6, he gets sufficient compensation for the piece. The threat, of course, is to take on uh, h4 and play rook e3, rook g3. Uh, let's say after queen to d8, then he could play e5, clearing the square e4 as a pivot point for his pieces. After knight takes e5, rook to e4, f5, rook h4, a white has sufficient compensation at least to hold a draw here, if not more. So Sultan Khan does not give in to that temptation. He does not take the knight and plays the queen to d8. The knight goes back uh, to f3. And here he could have played g4. That would have been an interesting idea. Computers like this. And then queen to g5. Uh, the queens cannot be exchanged because if they do, the knight would be trapped on h4. Uh, but instead, he plays the queen to e7, following the plan that he's already set for himself and connecting these rooks on the back rank. h3 to keep the pawn from advancing to g4 and displacing the knight. Again, it doesn't want to, it wants to keep control over the d4 square. Rook A to B8 to put some pressure down the B file. B3, helping to defend that pawn. Obviously, the knight and the queen hold that for the moment. Bishop to A8, clearing the way for the rook to keep the pressure on the pawn. Knight to B1. Sultan B sees this idea of knight to C3, knight to B5. That would be a very nice square for his knight. So Sultan Khan plays knight D to E5, seeking to trade off the defender of the D4 square. Um, if knight takes e5, he would, could take with the pawn, and now the knight would be incredibly strong on d4. Uh, but instead, a4 is played by uh, Sultan Beef, strengthening his hold over b5, but obviously weakening his control over b4. Um, so it's an interesting move, but he gives up as many squares as it gets. Uh, Sultan Khan goes ahead and takes the knight on f3, removing the defender of d4. Bishop takes f3, and then knight to d4. A beautiful knight, already with a threat, threatening rook takes b3. Uh, the queen is the, the pawn's only defender. So now Sultan b plays bishop to d1 to use the bishop to control the defense of, uh, of this square on b3. Um, but that allows... No, notice the way Sultan Khan uses his pieces. This, such beautiful coordination. Now that this bishop is no longer on this light square diagonal. What does he do? Boom, f5. 
he opens the light squared diagonal. And if white uh, tries to avoid that with, say, uh, knight to c3, then he can just break through with f4 after the queen moves. Uh, he's opening the f file and uh, has a very, very strong position. So instead, white goes ahead and takes on f5. Rook takes f5, preparing to double rooks. And when people say you want every single piece in the attack, they're talking about positions just like this. This is a gorgeous position from black, every piece involved uh, in the attack. Rook to c3, not only trying to add some defense to b3, but also some control over f3, which is quite vulnerable. Rook b to f8, every piece attacking. The two rooks attack the f2 pawn as well as the f3 square. Uh, rook to f1. And uh, here, Sultan Khan plays a very strong move, the exchange sacrifice. Rook to f3, but it's not much of a sacrifice. Uh, basically, this move completely wins the game. And uh, after bishop takes f3 from Sultan Beef, rook takes f3, white resigned. And I want you to see the geometric tactic here. That, and this is the reason white resigned. When the queen moves to d2, it doesn't matter where the queen goes, this, this tactic always works, even if it go, the queen goes to e1. Uh, you play rook takes c3. And if the knight takes, the knight to f3 check forks the king and queen. And if the queen takes, knight to e2 check forks the king and the queen. A beautiful finish to a beautiful game. Uh, someone who approached the game with no formal training at all, but played it at the very highest level. Again, uh, mention in the comments section if you think he should be posthumously awarded the Grandmaster title. I hope you enjoyed this game. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.